Let's speak to the businessman, John Caldwell, co-founder of Phones For You. He knows a bit about balancing the books. Um, you've since sold your shares in phone, Phones For You, but imagine the wider economy was your business. What would you be doing now when you see those numbers, a 10% shrink in everything that the economy is worth? My business would almost certainly have gone under without significant government help. And we were, uh, at the time, making £130 million uh, pounds of net profit per year. And yet, we could not have sustained this crisis without a huge amount of government help. And in the past, you have supported the Conservative government. What do you make of the measures so far that they've used to, well, to help? You know, I've been, to answer that question, I have to tell you that I've been forecasting an absolute fiasco of the UK economy for five months. I don't agree with the Bank of England's current forecasts. I've never agreed with them. They've always been too optimistic. Five months ago, I forecast an absolute devastating collapse of the economy which would uh, amount to maybe up to 15% drop in GDP this year and 3 million unemployed. Everything I've seen since then justifies those numbers. Uh, the Bank of England now, in my opinion, are being extremely optimistic. And I think it's because politicians and the Bank of England actually have never been through business cycles. There's businesses out there that are absolutely bleeding to death and will never recover. So when we talk about a recovery of the UK economy by the end of next year, that is nonsense. I'm afraid that is not going to happen. It's impossible because there will be millions of jobs lost that can't be recovered. It takes a long time to found a business, to make a business successful and to employ people. And those businesses are being destroyed. It's one of the reasons that I came up with my Cordwell pandemic recovery, which I now call CPR. And the best analogy I can give to what the government are doing, uh, and they have done a lot of good things, but they are, they've got a patient in the hospital with a major heart failure. And what the surgeons are doing at the moment is putting sticky plasters onto the cut finger. John, and John, the government would the say these, these aren't sticky plasters. sometimes onto the wrong cut finger. And we need to get down to planning this economy for the next 10 John, years. John, the, the government would say these aren't sticky plasters. At 30 billion on the job retention no, scheme, investing in apprenticeships, no. borrowing to the full value of what the economy's worth. No, we are in a lot no, of debt already. That's absolutely wrong, Nina, I'm afraid. That's completely wrong. There is no quantifiable amount of money that we can borrow. There isn't a limit. In fact, if we don't borrow a lot more money and repair this economy rapidly, the government are going to be £200 billion worse off in unemployment benefits and lost revenues, lost VAT, lost taxation, etc. And they'll be borrowing an extra 200 billion a year anyway to cover the problems. So what we need to do is invest now, but we do need to invest wisely. And I've stated all along that wise investment would be in apprenticeship schemes, it would be into renewable energy city, uh, infrastructure in general, and attracting inward investment from companies that are at the moment operating abroad. John, we really, really need to do something very serious for the future of this economy. Public sector borrowing is close to two trillion at the moment, almost an incomprehensible number. You're saying borrow up to another trillion to safeguard things yes. in the future. What does that do to the reputation of the economy? What does it do about its it, credibility? It you know, it doesn't do anything because we're all in the same boat throughout the world. Everybody's economy is destroyed. The people that will float to the top and be the heroes of this are the people that grab the moment, invest in the economy, create jobs and create wealth. And the reason that we can do it now, and we could have probably never done it before, is because we've got... We've got low interest rates actually tending towards negative interest. We've got low inflation tending towards deflation, and that's a killer for any economy. And we've got, we've got the absolute lowest cost of borrowing ever. If the government borrowed another trillion, and I'm not saying that's the right number, but if it, if it was an extra trillion, the cost of that would be about 20 billion per annum. We're going to lose 200 billion in increased one, costs of one revenue. One suggested way of, of raising revenue for the state would be for people like you, you're worth 
I've been told, is over £2 billion. You should be paying more tax. And I've answered this question endlessly. And the question to that is very, very simple. I'm not against paying more tax, but a lot of people are. But and they would move from the UK economy and leave the UK economy in even worse shape. But even if that were not true, we're talking about a gnat on an elephant's back. Taxing the rich won't even begin. You're talking about a few billion pounds. I'm talking about borrowing hundreds of billions to invest in the economy to create jobs and not just keep stick putting sticky plaster on. Okay, John. Many thanks.